you. Good. So I'd like to present to you um, this concept of forest cooperative societies. Um, that is a traditional um, form of land ownership, um, a community forest in uh, Northern Westphalia in Germany, and how actually they um, used land consolidation to improve this kind of, of ownership and actually work also on fragmentation. So it's the topic that we are discussing here. Um, forest cooperative societies uh, are called uh, Waldgenossenschaften in German. And this is a traditional community forest in, a, in, in several regions, but this particular way of doing it is from, from the Siegerland region um, in Northern Westphalia. And um, this area is quite, uh, well, it was forested during the pre-industrialization phase because they needed a lot of timber for iron works, um, for uh, leather making, tannery and so on. And that's why the, the forest was heavily um, overexploited and why they came up with this sort of um, traditional community forestry to maintain the forest in, in, in villages. And the idea is actually that the forest is owned by a village community, so the families own um, land shares, but not a particular piece of land, it's just the community forest, and uh, they have a, a certain share of it, and it's managed by the whole um, community in a 15 to 20 years rotation. It was really a coppice forest system, and you can see this here, they, they were producing um, yeah, firewood, um, construction timber, uh, they used the bark for tannery, and they even have to, had a whole um, annual management system. So there was also agroforestry components in it. Um, it was really a, a full, let's say, coppice forest management system. And one of the earliest systems which you could call, you know, uh, an, a sustainability approach to forestry. Um, the thing is that these Waldgenossenschaften, that these cooperative societies obtained these land rights in a, let's say, traditional manner. So it was really the, the, the communities who decided also on the forest management and on, on the way how they, they shared the benefits. Um, these, um, let's say, uh, forest cooperative societies have survived over time. Uh, of course, in many areas, they became um, less important, but specifically in this region, they were maintained. And um, let's say, you know, it was inherited over the decades through to, to the families. But uh, in 1975, they actually converted this traditional uh, ways, this traditional land rights into a full legal act. Um, so this was really an effort of the, of the forest um, authorities to make these um, cooperative societies uh, a full legal body. And so they are actually having a certain um, legal act just referring to this category. And this means they became a public body by law and they can act as an, if you want, as an association. It's basically an association of owners who can work on a majority vote. So if uh, a majority in the um, community votes on a decision, we want to do this or that with the forest, then it's decided and it can be enforced also even legally. And this means that also these forest cooperative societies actually can enter these legal procedures, such as a, 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 as a land consolidation. They become, can become a partner or an, an actor in these land consolidations. And it's quite a, a specific legal, pro, uh, let's say, construct um, because it's still considered a private forest and you have the landowners as shareholders. But as I said, it's just a, a, an ownership of shares and not of a particular parcel. So what they do is, um, and what the forest authority in that region actually promotes, is that this traditional, um, forest cooperative societies, which are sometimes even really very small. Yeah? It can be just one village or maybe two families together who have their own uh, traditional land rights and who were converted in a, into an official uh, forest cooperative society. They are sometimes still quite small. So the authority uses land consolidation as a tool to merge several 
of these um, traditional, if you want, uh, cooperative societies, and which means that they actually join or they merge together um, forest owners and forest land at the same time. And this first example that I show you here, it's a particular procedure um, which is completed. I think it's already 10 years old. Um, they merged five small um, forest cooperative societies, which you see on the, on the left side, into one bigger one. And this means the whole forest co cooperative society grew in, in, in the size. It reached a viable management size. So this is like a, a, a very well manageable forest enterprise of 500 hectares. They um, dissolved this, let's say, very complicated boundaries within the, um, the forest area. And uh, they merged all the shareholders together. So the, the remaining um, forest cooperative society, Musen, has 500 shareholders in the end. And on top of that, they also managed to activate actually uh, forest owners which were inactive, yeah? private owners who were very small parcels of land. They actually also were convinced to join this new forest, um, forest cooperative society. And that's, I really shows, let's say, the benefits of, of both approaches. Yeah? On the one hand, you combine the ownership, but on the second level with the, using the land consolidation tool, you also um, merge the, the land area and make it in a more yeah, approachable and useful way. This is another example, and this is actually the, the largest forest cooperative society that we have in Northern Westphalia today. It's called the, the, the GWG Hilchenbach. Um, and here also they joined several cooperative societies together. Um, but this was even more complex because they um, included 300 landowners. As you can see, the map is really quite uh, yeah, fragmented in, in, the, in the first place. They also uh, included 73 hectares of fragmented forest. So they were, work, were working on really fragmented land parcels as well. And in addition to that, or let's say a main driver, why also the people joined actually this, this um, consolidation project, is that they built um, two kilometers of road within this whole area. There were, it's a mountainous region, several re uh, areas were not accessible before. And through this formal proced procedure of the consolidation, they actually um, proposed also a, a much better access, uh, let's say, a, a forest road network that was being implemented there. And the overall result for this larger forest um, cooperative society is that it, it gained, let's say, an economic stability. Yeah? It became a major or a larger um, forest enterprise. Um, it could even become, because of the size, it, it became eligible for specific support grants of the, of the regional government, uh, which means these um, road constructions and also the addi additional measures could be co-financed from, from public funding. And what you also see on this um, yellow map is that this continues this process. The forest cooperative society continues to grow, even though the um, consolidation procedure is finished, uh, there are still private owners and smaller units which sort of um, you know, join the, the land, uh, the cooperative society. So this is a continuing process that they also include further forest owners. And then the last example, it, this is actually not a forest cooperative society. This is just an example of a very efficient and very, very useful um, land consolidation. So here, it was a very heavily fragmented area. And this is, you know, a small, just a small part of the whole area, this 12 hectare. Um, but over time, this land became heavily fragmented because they also divide you know, the heritage uh, equally be, be, be between the, the uh, to the next generation. And what you can see here is that somehow also the municipality um, obtained quite a lot of these uh, land parcels over time because um, people were leaving the community or um, didn't have a, um, you know, a, a son or, or, or a daughter. To, to pass it to the next generation. And 
this was the main the main starter for this land consolidation was that the that the municipality wanted to acquire and consolidate their land but since this was really uh, well organized and well communicated right from the beginning they managed to do this as well for all the other owners and um yeah it's just an example that you can do it that you can overcome this very uh, harsh and yeah, difficult situations where the where the forest is not managed over decades uh, because nobody knows where is this land and it's really not efficient to manage such uh, small parcels that through this procedure you can really obtain uh, a very good end result and if you see this uh, final map there are actually also owners who rejected to this process but since it's, since it became a formal procedure the um, authorities have the right to reallocate owners and sort of even if they are not agree with the whole procedure uh, the, the, the larger interest is to optimize the land. It's written in the law. You, the, the, the authority has the right to do this. And so I think several of these owners who you see, uh, you know, these this colored patches, they were just reassigned there because they didn't react to any uh, invitation to join it formally. Yeah? So this is actually a, a part which is quite important in land consolidation that at some point when the process has advanced, when, when there's a majority, who agreed on it, that actually they can even force owners to, to, to join it and to consolidate the land. Um, this is an overview of benefits and impacts. If you think as on the cooperative societies uh, and the land consolidation as a combined tool. So on the one hand, the consolidation of owners means that you have um, yeah, a better legal situation about the land rights. You reduce the number of the owners, you create larger forest enterprises, which become viable for management. If you look on the consolidation of the land aspects, it means that you have less parcels, less boundary problems. Um, you optimize sometimes even the, the, the shape of the forest land to make it more, more homogeneous, uh, let's say forest uh, stand, for example, uh, and you activate unmanaged forest land. And what also, what I didn't show yet in this presentation is that there are a lot of additional methods that you can be linked to this land consolidation. For example, this building or improvement of the road network. Um, some of these measures also mean that you uh, improve the management plan in the silviculture, that you change it to a different silviculture system, for example, that the owners can obtain um, advice from the, from the state forest. Uh, or you can include um, landscape measures or um, water management so that there are water management plants to better you know, um, use the ecological functions of the forest and so on and so on. And all this together, if you implement these kind of measures uh, on the land scale, it creates a lot of, let's say, impacts in the longer run. It valorizes the ownership, it enhances the forest management, it can also have benefits for recreation and the cultural heritage and yeah, even stimulate better regional economic effects. For example, if such a uh, consolidated forest lands becomes a viable forest enterprise. But all of this means <laughs> that you have to work together with a lot of people. Um, and I like this, this very famous saying from, uh, I think it was one of the first general uh, directorate of the FAO, and forestry is basically not about trees, it's about people. Um, and this is an example here of one of these um, yeah, common meetings for these forest cooperative societies. You need very good moderators on the, on the forest authority side who can you know, guide all the participants of these land consolidation procedures. Um, and then you come to a result. Yeah, And on the lower end, you see um, sort of a, a founding meeting of such a forest cooperative society where all these landowners agreed to leave their private property and to merge it all together into a, a common forest society. And um, yeah, that is my presentation for um, this topic. I also have one slide with some suggestions how this, uh, what kind of research needs are there, but um, Maybe I just uh, give the floor now to you if there are some questions or some some things to be clarified. Thanks.